a uh, very pleasant Sunday morning here in the northwest of Ireland, and uh, I hope you're all keeping well. There seems to have been a bit of a tizzy yesterday, a bit of a a, a upsetment to use that interesting word that I once heard years ago in a restaurant. I thought it was funny, an upsetment yesterday with some people for two reasons. One, some didn't like my me spending two two days three at most talking about Tolkien stuff apparently it was too much for them and they had to in the Shakespearean style I must make haste from this place this place of of Tolkien uh, uh, the hatred uh. you know there's a lot of that kind of that kind of thing went on <coughs> they couldn't just piss off they had to like do a kind of like you know I came here not for the Tolkien, not for the Tom Bombadils, or not for the Middle Earth, but I came here to talk about, oh, the crisis in the world. I must flee this place. There was a lot of that kind of shite went down yesterday. That was funny enough. But also, ooh, controversy. 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 I've had my Weetabix this morning, can you tell? Eh... Uh, The, the Christians are upset at me again. And then they went on the Christian Wars later as well. <laughs> so they came after the, the the unbelievers and the Sodomites, you know, ooh, good old Christian, not Christian Wars, but good old, you know, Abrahamic pitchfork time that was. So, And what they mostly took umbrage, umbrage, of the word I was, what they took, um, what they took umbrage with was uh, me referring to Jesus Christ as a rabbi on a stick. Now, apparently that's incorrect. Apparently, that thing around a people's necks that worship Jesus is him doing hand gliding or lifting weights or something. You know, he's in, he's in the gym. Uh, it's apparently... And he wasn't, he wasn't a rabbi, even though all through the Gospels, uh, the apostles and people around him refer to him as a rabbi in all the books. But apparently, he's, and then he, at the end, I was mistakenly led to believe that the Stations of the Cross was about this rabbi eventually being nailed to the stick. And this was the fun, as his as his way of, of suffering on behalf of mankind and dealing with this thing called original sin. But apparently I'm wrong about all that. So he was a, a Buddha on a biscuit or a Mitra on a pizza. I don't know. But apparently I could not say rabbi on a stick. And people said, you could it be any more offensive? Well, let me tell you why you personally found that offensive. It's because you are anti-Semitic. And like so many Christians, particularly the Irish and the English ones, in the truth or an alt-media thing, you will go to extraordinary lengths to deny the fact that you're fighting for your freedom using a Jewish Semitic religion and that's it was like I reminded you of what you really were a Talmudist of the north did I mean it in a, in a, in a, a disparaging way kind of now <clears throat> I don't care if you worship a horse flag named Eric I don't care if you're Abrahamic, Muslim, Jewish, Christian, Zoroastrian, pagan, atheist. I don't care. Once you don't push your stuff on me. And you lot yesterday who said, this is offensive, stop it. You are pushing your Jewish religion upon me. But I'm a Christian, I'm not a Jew. Mm, let's talk about that. Bum, 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 bum. You see, bum, 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 Mr. Rabbi, yeah. Give me religion, bum, 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 bum. Pray from the Romans into my region, bum, 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 bum. I don't want to be reminded that I am a patriot worshipping a foreign god. 
So, <clears throat> yeah, they, they go on about blood and soil, and then they start bringing in, you know, like, like, you know, what's his name? Barry Drew, Barry Drew Maher. here. I raised all my children to be Patriots of America. Blood and soil. Fighting Zog. I was saying this to my daughter, Bathsheba Cassandra Hebron, as it says in Leviticus 47.52. Though they may walk in the shadow of the valley of the fields of Amagideon, the stalks that grow fresh upon the the children of Israel shall renew their blood. Could be any more, you know, this, this kind of thing, you know. And, uh... The first great reset was Christianity. Even people who have been critical and even pro Great Reset have referred to that that this, this this is this is the first time that there's been a monumental change in Western society since Christianity was adopted by the Roman Empire and pushed into the empire as a whole. Both the imperialist empire and then later the theological autocratic empire which is what really took over Ireland under this, you know, under these guys coming over bags of money and going, here you go, Irish. Here's another page from the Torah. Oh, sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, bring us the freedom. Here's another page from Leviticus. Oh, Jesus Christ. And then the extraordinary lengths that the, the Irish patriot community will go to to defend this. Now, again, I don't care if you're a Buddhist and you're an Irish patriot. I don't care if you're a Christian, a Muslim, an atheist, anything. But don't be telling me that you have the, you, you're, you're the one with the, the underlying software for the liberation of our people. It's like the way Sinn Féin tried to make out that Ku Cullen was on the IRA Army Council. You know, don't, don't begin, this is why, you know, Sinn Féin and Irish Republicanism think they have the exclusive ownership of Irish freedom, as if, you know, Queen Maeve, was, you know, was a Sinn Féin representative for Rat Krog and Sout, you know, three and a half thousand years ago, you know, as if the, the, the Moroccan was going around going, Chukia Allah, Chukia Allah. <clears throat> don't, don't be telling me your way is the only way. I, uh, I believe that the pagan way is the right way for me uh, because fun, I cannot stand, when I'm standing at Dunangus, in the Aran Islands, or Grinnon of Aelach in County Derry, Donegal border, when I'm in Newgrange, when I'm in Doubt, Note, when I'm in Carrochiel, Carramore, Queen Maeve's Cairn atop of Knockner Ray, the last thing I think about is, funny enough, uh, being as as weird as I am, the last thing that pops into my mind is the uh, the fertile crescent north of uh, the Sea of Galilee. You know, it's just, just I'm, I'm just something wrong with me. Obviously, I don't I don't relate all this 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 around me and all the culture going back to individuals who were called rabbis and stuff like that, uh, and who had menorahs and were fighting the Canaanites on the other side of the world. I'm just weird, I guess, that way. Huh, who, who, you know, this is how I was made. Bizarre, you know. But anyway, that's why. I, so, but at the same time, too, someone's beside me and going, I feel Jesus in my heart right now. And I would go, yeah, that's, good, that's good. That's your own business. Good for you. But don't be telling me that that's the only path. That that's the fundamental thing. And that's what you're doing when many of these Irish, like, patriot types are talking about. And the English ones as well. Britain force carrying crucifixes into Muslim areas. You have to laugh at that one. No, no sense of self-reference because Christians don't have it. Most of us don't have it. And then you have they don't they don't read. They say things like, "Well, what's happening now is in the Bible. What is?" But the pharmaceuticals show me the passage. Oh, it's just in there. Where? It's in it's in it's in the Revelations, the, um, the Apocalypse. Okay, so the Romans in in you know AD forty were distributing. Or in a needlecraft to the to the, to the Jew, what Jews? What? Oh no, it's in there. It's in there. It's, in, it's all about the coming now, Bible prophecy. Okay, but you know the Saint John's letter was was about the, the year the year he lived in. It wasn't about the future. It was about the the coming future. Oh, yeah, six six six. That means you know transhumanism. No, it doesn't. It means uh, Roman banking. Six 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 in the Kabbalah just means the accumulation of wealth through means other than labour. 
Chicken pie. So, so. You know, I can definitely see the appeal of Christ, Christ as a as an appealing individual. But even Tolkien, the devout Roman Catholic, gave up on him, and that's why he wrote Aragorn, for God's sake. And so, uh, again, again, I don't care. It's your own business. But just don't be, don't be telling me you're the right. And they'll say things like, you know, they go to extraordinary lengths, like, well, if you look at Irish Christian monastic poetry in the Middle Ages, yeah, I'm listening. I'm listening. You can see how our nation was forged. Come on, listen, 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 listen. in the texts that they wrote. Oh, to right, to right. Uh, you know, multi page long vellum treaties on the royal house of David and Israel. Yes, I, that's what's in those books. Have you ever looked at the Book of Kells? It's pages about the lineage of King David, it's pages about the Gospels. It's beautiful and all that stuff, but it's, it's it's the Irish adding to the Christian text. No, it's not. It's not. It's these are the ones that they were the equivalent of EU. Let me tell you what the book. Even though it's as beautiful as they are, and the books of Kells and the books of the Book of Duro and all that stuff, as beautiful as those Celtic manuscripts are, at the end of the day, they are the same thing as EU working documents are today they are to be distributed among the laity to follow the great the end of force great reset it just is you look at the book of ali Mote and you can see this on, on on one of the pages where you have the warning about the both viking and pagan ohm script to the to, in latin where they translate both and they call uh the Furtek, the runic script of the Vikings, they call it uh, the, the Ohm of the Vikings. And you can see they're in a state of terror. And they're doing it, and what you see is cancel culture. I'm an Irish Christian patriot. Why do you say we were part of cancel culture? Well, the book of Ballymote makes it quite clear. You are to hunt down anyone in Ireland who is using Furtek, that's runic language, or Ohm, O-G-H-A-M, Irish script, writing it's language okay and you are to convert them to latin or irish and tell them don't be using that it's cancel culture the first cancel culture was the christians coming in here and telling us we couldn't use our own writing oh and they were doing the same to the vikings that lived on the east coast and people are descending of that and that's why they put it in the book of Ballymore. but you but then you go but this is a, this is you know this this was a unifying force in Ireland. Oh God, ours were never unified. The only thing that unified Ireland was the British. Part of the, we were all, this, this country was made of numerous kingdoms. What do you think of the GAA? You know, just put, instead, put, instead of ham sandwiches, put fucking knives and daggers in their hand, and that's it. That's the history of Ireland. And uh, you know. <laughs> You can create your own softlicism, your own internal mind and view of the world, and that's okay. But again, to impose it upon others. Now, you know that it's been well known, that I've been saying for many years, that the reason why the Irish freedom movement is born to failure is because of the religious aspect. And, you know, that's why they flooded the country full of Protestants. Because they knew that the Catholics and the Catholics would start, and the Protestants would fight amongst each other over which one was the most Jewish, uh, rather than actually going after the British Empire, and it worked successfully, successfully well. And you know, you, you got like this, this. The history doesn't make any sense if you study. If you read my book, The Druid Code, and you study the history of the air, the crossover period, there's big problems there that have never been fully addressed. Like Clon MacNice, right? Clon MacNice is the ruins of this enormous monastic institution on the River Shannon, right in the middle of the country. It sits on a place called the Escarida. The Escarida is an ancient road going back to Neolithic times that runs from where Dublin is over to where Galway is. So it basically was a road that connects the, runs across the country, connecting the Irish Sea to the Atlantic. Now, what's interesting about it is these kinds of processional ways, and you'll see this in the upcoming film I'm making with Neil MacDonald, that these kind of processional ways seem to have arrived from a common 
ancestry which is unknown okay this 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 processional path and they were very very you hear about the roman roads right well the pagan lands had roads too as well but they were they were very pagan when you think about it because the when the romans wanted to go from paris to say toulouse they just made a straight path as possible you know and if they had to go around a, ma a mountain range they went at right angles around it this was rome's enforcement and there's nothing wrong with it it was, it was just a trade thing so a lot of those were built upon roads that had already been built by the gauls now the escarita was a typical pagan road in that it was it used the natural landscape of the the, the lay of the land in order to na navigate it so just the way you'd, you'd have river navigation like in russia the river navigation up and down the Volga and uh, the Nipnir and all that was very the way they moved about north south between the Black Sea and the Arctic Circle, well, the, the Baltic. They used natural f causeways in Ireland, and one of them was the Escarida. The Escarida was the limit of the glaciation deposit of boulders and soil, so it was a natural hill causeway elevated embankment that ran right across the country had lots of advantages one it was a straight line from east to west more or less because the the glaciation deposited that way they deposited glacial erratics and stuff also it gave you height above the forests Ireland was densely forested back then and that way you were not in the forest and Ireland was full of wolves and bears and everything and, and you know dangerous all kinds of dangerous animals and you were safe on the path because you had viewing distance and height and if a bear was down below looking at you for dinner you could throw rocks at him and stuff and so it became a natural path across the country now St. Kieran I couldn't remember his name yesterday St. Kieran who founded we're told the monastic centre at Collins at 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 uh, Clonmacnoise, right in the middle of the country. We're told that that was to be the great centre of Christianity, not just for Ireland, uh, but for all of the North Atlantic region, Britain, and everywhere else. And it was, it was, it definitely was. Right into Switzerland, it penetrated its uh, its power. And there were something like twenty seven libraries there, numerous two round towers, numerous churches. All kind, and it was all it was a big e you think of like i think it was like the the eu parliament in strasbourg well it was that version for christianity distributing text and this kind of thing now what's interesting about it is its history doesn't make any sense saint Kieran he became a christian by slaughtering a bull and writing on its its vellum now that's a very pagan thing the actual slaughtering of the bull so that's a very interesting, so there's definitely, he was probably a Druid. And the royal person who set that up was a guy called Dermot McCarville, who Dermot McCarville. And he was a pagan to the day he died. So why is a pagan and a very much a pagan story setting up what became Ireland's greatest monastic institution? You know, ecclesiastical, it was the Vatican of the North. And it's because the history has been rewritten to tell us something else it wasn't and the usual thing the irish were all animals and barbarians before the you know the the romans the, the romano christians the romano jews came to Ireland and, and told us we were not and this is a has been a problem for our people ever since that we irish look to outside ourselves as at every opportunity rather than looking into ourselves we depend on an outside force that changes. And that all began with the officialdom of Christianity. So Christianity was really the Roman Empire, bringing the first four books of the Torah. And we still, and if you look at my film, Who Stole the All Father, we don't really know when the whole story of Jesus appeared. We certainly, there's, no, there's, almost, no, there's almost no real reference to him in Cathedral. Christianity as far as the crucifixion thing until about a thousand years ago it's very very odd that this cross thing comes out of the blue just as they're infiltrating into northern Europe and they're encountering the Odinists and the Votanists and we all know what the story of Odin and Votan is now 
you know, and they, just like they've adopted our feast days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and all our holidays, likewise they have co-opted and appropriated our gods, the pagan gods. No doubt about that. There's no doubt about that. So, okay, then you say, well, I, I, I love Jesus and the story of it. I have no problem with that. I have no problem with that. And then I love him. Okay, maybe even if he didn't exist, I feel him as a power force. Well, that's actually how you should be. That's how you should be. Because that's actually probably, if there is a real Christianity out there, it's not what they call Orthodox Christianity today. The Orthodox Christianity that's been pushed within the alt movement is extremely Jewish. Now, I'm not putting down Jews or anything like that. Or anything like, it's extremely rabbinical. Extremely rabbinical. And it takes the, it, it's very literal regarding quotations from the, the, you know, ancient Hebrew books and stuff like that. And that's what the Irish ones are like as well. Now, you'd say, what about the Virgin Mary and all this? Well, you know, that's that's all up to interpretation you know and things like that and the immaculate conception and rosary rosary beads existed in all kinds of religions along with their meditative beads long before christianity and what bothers me is that it's looking to so i'm an irish patron good i love my country good when I look at the landscape of this country, I'm filled with the feeling towards my ancestors and I want to protect them. I understand. And Christ is standing beside me. That's like the same thing as saying as Muhammad is standing beside you, or Buddha is standing beside you, or Zoroaster is standing beside you. You know, again, this is the Irish thing of looking outside rather than looking within. I'm not saying everyone should become a pagan. But there's a, there's, a, there's a sense of appropriateness, you know. There's an appropriateness. Isn't one of the things that we always say about multiculturalism is that it isn't really multiculturalism. It's actually mixing everything up into a horrible, a horrible kind of void, tasteless mush, which is true. It's really so corporations can find it's easier to sell products to people around the world. Instead of having to make advertising campaigns for different cultures, they can just have one. You know, if you look at Coca-Cola years ago, it had to do, or even like Guinness Beer is a classic one. They had to make ads that were bespoke for every single country, you know. And that was just how advertising was then because you had nation states. Well, the, the reason why they tried to, they're ending the nation states is purely for corporations. So instead of making 50 different ads for beer or for washing machines or for cars, they can make all the cultures the same, multicultural, some, some kind of empty mush and then sell it in one advertising campaign to save money and to broaden their product. Lovely ginger cat walking around here. And that's what that's all about. That was at the, but the same thing was with, with the Christianity. Let's give them all one religion that we can use to control them all. And because paganism is far too complicated. Celtic paganism is very different, not very different, but it's different from a cultural level, a regionalist level, than Nordic paganism. Nordic paganism is different from Celt-Iberian paganism. That's different from Hellenic paganism, from Slavic paganism. It's different from, you know, Semitic paganism or African paganism. So let's give them a religion that we can sell our political message of the empire, Rome, at the, was the great B666, to all, and that's what that meant in the Bible, to all the cultures. So instead of having pletras of different kinds of gods, we will give them a new god that will be they will all worship together and then that one true god and one true religion will lead to a one true law one true king one true emperor one true this thing on one you know and and it will lead to a mono a mono authority across all these cultures rather than true diverse and true 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 so they will like just like today when they would go in and say well, you know, our banking system is just like your banking system, except we blah, 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 back then. Well, our, you know, one God in heaven is just like your, your, your Odin. Tell us how, and it just over time, it just does not dissolve. They get into the schools and the institutions, or what do we talk about today? The Great Reset is getting into the schools. Well, how do you think us pagans felt 1,500 years ago? 
when all these monks were taking the children out of our communities and telling them about this guy in Israel, nailed to a stick. You know, the, even if you ever think about these things, I'm totally against the Great Reset. Why? Uh, because it's coming, it's destroying all our individual cultures. Great. What about Christianity? Oh, I'm not, I'm not turning on that. That's a, that's that's as Irish as points of Guinness. I have no problem with your religion. Don't be telling me your one is the right one. And if you're offended, that says more about you and how insecure you are with your religion than it ever says about me being offensive. If I have rattled you, the bisto out of you, because I referred to Jesus Christ as a rabbi on a stick, that shows a self, a deep denial within you, not a, a need to offend within me. It's really that simple. And... And the, the, this weekend has been a, a big up, a big upturn in this kind of like, you know, crucifix waving stuff going on in alt media. And again, that's your own business. But don't be, don't be getting the pitchforks out for me, when I hold up the, you know, it's unbelievable. So saying a rabbi on a stick is like showing, a, you know, a, 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 you know, having a garlic sandwich around the vampire. But it's, but it's the truth. It's, it's, it, that's what he was, a rabbi nailed to a stick. Unless you can work it, he was working out in the gym. Or he was hang gliding. That's all up to you. I don't care. Just don't push it on me. Don't, don't try to censor my YouTube channel. Don't try to censor what me and my friends talk about. Don't try to censor our dialogue. Especially if the authority that you have for that has been handed to you on down by transnational Roman rabbis 1800 years ago, 1700 years ago. Don't be, don't be telling me what I can talk about here. I don't go onto your YouTube channel and tell you what you can and what you cannot talk about. Do not be coming on mine and doing the same. You go back to your little Bibles and your mauling your rosary beads and whatever else you do and don't be coming here complaining about cancel culture when you're doing the cancel culture of your own. Remember, the Great Reset, this is the Great Reset number two, and even the globalists have admitted that one. So, let me talk about what, what good has Christianity done for Ireland, right? I guess art, I guess definitely art. But we were, all you have to do, I mean, all you have to do is look at the pagan art and I'm, you know, you think of things like I'm not convinced the art for a minute that the Arda Chalice is Christian. I think that's an actual a cauldron, a pagan, a druidic cauldron. But all, all, all the art is all was that you know all the Celtic art that you all say, oh, this is a, this is the this is the Gospels brought this to Ireland. That all existed in our artwork long before it's the you know imaginary Saint Patrick showed up. And we already had that. It gave us, you know, it gave us communities. We had communities. It gave us fate. We had fate. It just wasn't that fate. It bonded our people together. The last pagan god of Ireland, the Crom Cruick, was universally worshipped all around the country. The last pagan god, the Crom Cruick, was what bonded our people together. It 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 promoted. It we were savages before it happened. Well, let's talk about that one. Uh, the Irish Confederacy Wars, which were about Catholics and Protestants, led to one third of the population of Ireland being exterminated. One third. Over the King James Bible versus the Latin Mass. At the end of the day. Are you telling me that that was not savage? but a few kingdoms fighting over resources and land back in pagan times is the real savage. I don't know. It seems to me if you're going to go to war, it would be much more preferable to go to war over resources and land in order to safeguard your tribe or to protect your holdings than it would be over to going over a, a Germanic versus Italian 
editorialization of a Hebrew text and you talk about us being savages. I must depart this place. Look, have a lovely fucking Sunday, okay? Regardless of what you are. Sanguine noses, but on a biscuit. You know? But on a biscuit would be a great title for a rockabilly. It's like a crams kind of song. But on a biscuit. But on a biscuit. I should be illegal. I should be illegal. But on a biscuit. But on a biscuit. Okay, but on a biscuit. Sanguine noses. Have a lovely Sunday. And stop pushing your religion on me. God is wrath.